It was almost Homeric in scope, an odyssey full of adventure and danger, and it was happening exactly 100 years ago. You may never have heard of it, but it is a story worth telling, so here you go. The legend of the German raider, Merve. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to a Great War special episode about the first voyage of the Merve. Well, I say first, but that's not entirely correct. The Merve was actually launched as a freighter, a banana boat called Pungo, true story, in 1914, but was requisitioned by the German Navy and refitted for future use as a mine layer, renamed, and was ready for service in November 1915. Early in the war, German light cruisers had been in service in the Atlantic, but the Allies had hunted them down. They still had the U-boats, of course, but there was a theory that a freighter with extra coal room for extra range, decent guns, torpedo tubes, and mines might make a good raider. Enter the Merve. At 5 a.m. on December 30th, the Merve weighed anchors and headed off into the North Sea, where she calmly made her way through the British Navy's net while spending the new year laying mines. And then she cruised down the English Channel, seriously, through the heart of the British Navy. Several British cruisers signaled her and she occasionally answered them and was even saluted at least once. See, the Merve carried a very powerful wireless radio set and her captain, Nicolas Graf zu Donnerschlödien, was able to follow the movements of the British patrol ships. Funnily enough, several of the British transmissions spoke of a strange liner that didn't answer questions. This was the Merve, but the Merve had encountered like a dozen British warships and she didn't answer the far off ones, correctly thinking she could outrun them, and she showed every courtesy to the closer ones. And so, the Merve ran the gauntlet from Germany to the Atlantic. The Merve, with about 300 men aboard, headed for the steamship lanes of the Spanish and Portuguese coast. Once there, she was relatively safe from pursuit, and indeed, it took weeks before anybody actually realized there was a German raider out there. But one by one, Allied ships failed to reach their destinations, and several ships arrived in England that claimed to have been chased by a mystery ship off the African coast. So, a flotilla of British cruisers was sent out. They returned empty-handed. Okay, at dawn, on February 9, 1916, a steamship pulled into Hampton Roads off the coast of Virginia. When the sun was up, the German naval flag was flying from the prow. This was not, however, the Merve. This was the British ship Appam, a victim of the Merve. And the Appam had now sailed across the Atlantic for 33 days, guided and guarded by a German crew of 22 men and one officer from the Merve. The Appam now also carried as prisoners 156 Appam officers and crew, 116 of its passengers, 138 survivors of ships destroyed by the Merve, and 20 Germans who had been en route to a prison camp in Britain on the Appam when rescued by the Merve. The ship was interned. Now, what status did this ship have? Germany claimed the right of asylum for a prize ship because of an old Prussian treaty with the US. Britain demanded that the ship be released. The US allowed the Appam to remain in German hands with the same privileges as other interned ships. The Appam was worth a million dollars stripped and its cargo sold for $700,000. There had also been a quarter of a million dollars in gold bars that went straight into the Merve's strongbox for a total haul of roughly $2 million. But now, at least everybody knew there was a raider out there eluding the Allies, right? And it had sunk and captured a whole bunch of ships. Well, the search that followed was more thorough and on a broader scale than any such search of the war so far, but to no avail. Then, on February 20th, the British ship Westburn pulled into Santa Cruz de Tenerife, a Spanish port. One German officer and six men from the Merve had brought it in with 206 prisoners from one Belgian and six British ships. After putting his human cargo ashore, the German lieutenant asked for the port's permission to re-anchor, and when it was granted, he went beyond the three-mile limit and blew up the Westburn. Again, the command came, the Merve must be found. The British public actually 
took the Merva to heart, though, even though she was the enemy. It was reminiscent of the glory days of British privateers going forth to wreck French commerce. But the Merva was never caught, and amazingly, on March 5, 1916, she pulled into Wilhelmshaven with 199 enemies as prisoners and the quarter million dollars in gold bars, of course, which is worth just under six million dollars in today's money. The Merve had sunk 15 Allied vessels, 13 British, one Belgian, and one French, with an aggregate of 60,000 tons of shipping. This had been accomplished in the face of combined Allied sea power. The Merve even came home the long way around, going around Iceland to journey through the Arctic Sea at the worst time of the year. Count Sudona Schlödien received a message from the Kaiser himself, summoning him to Berlin for a meeting in person. The crew of the ship were all awarded the Iron Cross second class, but the skipper was given the Blue Max, Germany's highest award. Thing is, was it the Möwe that actually sank all of those ships? There had been a concerted German effort for interned ships at different ports to break out on the same day and rendezvous. The Barenfeld and the Turpin had escaped from South American ports that day and were never seen again, apparently. Perhaps they had also assumed the title of Merve and carried out some of the raids. We'll likely never know, but it's a good story. And think about it. In under three months, the Merve sunk 15 merchant ships captured the Appam and returned home with nearly 200 prisoners and a whole lot of gold, and finally was most probably also responsible for the loss of the British battleship King Edward VII, which struck a mine in the North Sea on January 6th. This was only the first raiding voyage of the Merve, and the rest of her legendary exploits lie in the future, but I thought you guys might enjoy a ripping yarn from the high seas. You can look up details of all of the victims of the Merve for yourself. It is really interesting. If you're still hungry for another great story about a German ship and its crew during the war, then click here for our special episode about the last voyage of the SMS Emden. For more crazy naval stories of World War I, like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. See you next time.